Backtrack six years, Moscow, late August of 2000. It's been a bad month. A subway explosion has killed 12, and a Russian nuclear sub has been lost with all 118 aboard. A call comes in about a fire in the antenna section of the Austin Kino TV Tower, which, at 1,772 feet, is the tallest structure in Europe. Ten minutes later, firefighters and emergency rescue workers are on the scene. Just below the blaze, the staff of the Seventh Heaven Restaurant, along with workers on the observation deck, start evacuating visitors. One by one, they start down the long, narrow stairs. They pass firemen going the other way. The fire had started 1,500 feet up among densely packed 40-year-old transmission equipment caused by a short circuit in the high-voltage cables of a paging company. After 45 minutes, the evacuation of visitors and most tower personnel is complete. Fire trucks, television cameras, and smoke emanating from the top of the TV tower attract curious passers-by. At around 7 p.m., authorities receive troubling word that an elevator is stuck about midway up with three passengers inside. Rescuers are immediately sent up, but frustratingly, they can only get to within about 20 feet of the stranded car. About 25 minutes later, two of the four elevator cables snap and the elevators fall to the ground. Firemen and rescue workers hold out hope until the end that the fallen elevators were empty and the people are still up in one of the two remaining cars. Due to the fire that night and for most of that week, the only TV station available in the entire city would be the privately held NTV. Just like that, an entire city's TVs went dark. Firemen worked through the night, waging an impressive fight, lugging heavy gear up all those stairs. But here, too, the tower's fire system is hopelessly out of date, and much of the interior of the tower is basically destroyed. Over the years, fire inspectors had fined nearly 50 different entities for various violations. And during the last inspection, three months prior to the fire, inspectors found 38 fire safety violations alone. But by that fateful day in August, only 16 of these had actually been fixed. To add insult to injury, had the tower's administration agreed to turn the power off right away, the fire could likely have been brought under control immediately. However, time on the air meant money, and it took them three hours to finally pull the plug, which, in payment for their greed, ironically ended up costing them ever so much more. Most Muscovites had their TV service restored within the week. However, rebuilding the full broadcasting system took almost another whole year. The tower itself was almost completely retrofitted, for which the Russian government kicked in over 2 billion rubles. These days, renovations are complete, and though the restaurants closed, the spire of the tower, just like in 2000, is once again covered with wires and dishes.